how to know if your website's fit for purpose. Interestingly, the first slide is actually we need to understand what the purpose of the website is. You know, to be a, a glossy brochure that lives in the cloud that just gives you some credibility or is it there to generate leads to sell products sell services online so that's the first thing that we really have to understand once we've understood that we can then to look at the next the basic so it's actually you know what should a website do and in my opinion and in, in the in, a, in the qbd's opinion a website should do these three things and i am aware that if anyone who was here from the last webinar have rewatched it, these are exactly the two same slides I start with. But I believe it's it's fundamental that we get the you know the the foundation in place. So a website should do these three things. Firstly, it should explain who you are and what you do. Secondly, it should help and influence a buying decision. And what I mean by that is your prospect, your customer should be able to come onto your website. They should be able to find everything about you, your products, and your service, and then they should be able to pick up the phone, put a contact form submission in, and ultimately the website should help or influence some buying decision. And finally, the website should generate leads. Does the website clearly say who you are and what you're doing? And this is a question that only you as the business owner can, can truly answer yourselves. I, I'm rich will come across this, and I'm sure you will, will or you've all been in a one-to-one -one or had a meeting with another client or, or company, and they've said something, but their website doesn't reflect that. And we're all potentially guilty of that. So we need to be, ask ourselves, does it clearly say who you are and what you do? Let's, for, the, for the purpose of today, let's assume that all of your websites do clearly say who you are and what you do. So we can move on and look at the rest of the content. No, in no particular order. So when we go and look at a website, we need to understand whether, you know, um, if it's fit for purpose, the first thing we look at is, is it mobile responsive? Does it respond to the screen? Responsive design is design that responds to the size of the screen. And a really good way to test it is to play a mobile phone and go onto your website or drag your browser down and, and resize. So I've just done it with two just quick screenshots with the QBD website where I've just dragged the, the browser window in and the website will respond to the screen. Uh, I'm sure you're all familiar and know why and how it's so important, but over half the internet is viewed on a mobile device, whether that's an iPad, a tablet, an iPhone or a Samsung device. And I'm really seeing it in looking at clients' accounts, especially the ones that deal with B2C, the mobile usage is overtaking the desktop. So when you are looking at your website and understanding whether it's fit for purpose, ensure that your content is, is the best it can be on a mobile device. It's still incredibly important to consider the desktop, but mobile is certainly, uh, it's, it's, it's so easy. I mean, we all do it in the adverts, come on, in the breaks, on the TV, we pick up our phones, we look on there. We don't go and get our laptops out and flip them open. So the mobile devices are incredibly important. Do all of the buttons and contact forms work? Now this is, this is a slide that I added in today. Um, last minute because actually it's all too easy for us to assume that the website works i was having a, a conversation and i added it off the back of a conversation with a, with a client with a new client who has just spent 700 pounds uh on google adwords and his contact forms didn't even work so you, we need to understand so I, I said to him i said we're doing this webinar this afternoon you should come along it'll be absolutely perfect for you because actually we're going to go for all the all the, the things that make to ensure the website's fit for purpose. And one of those things is it should work. So do all the buttons in the contact forms work? And a really good way for you to test that is just go on there and click through all the buttons. There all there is some technology that can speed up that process, and I'll go through uh, one of those tools a little bit later. Is it secure? Is it secure socket layer secure? So that's that little. Well, I used to you know we used to be it was a little green padlock. It's now a, a grey padlock. That sits in the corner of the web browser. And the easiest way to test is just go and click on the padlock. It'll either say not secure or it will have a padlock. If it has a padlock, great, you have one. If you don't, then you can get one. My advice is contact your web provider, whether that's a, a, a physical company or it's one of the, the builders, so like one to free edge, Squarespace, and get them to put it in. 
you can get free SSLs um, through a company called Let's Encrypt, and they are absolutely perfect. Um, we use them in some circumstances as they, you know, it's a great way. But actually, you may find that you need a little bit more security. Um, and you know, and I would always recommend paying for an SSL if you can, um, just because you get that added bit, bit of extra security. Is the website up to date? And not just from a technology perspective, but also from a content perspective. So are you putting your up-to-date information on the website? And you know, have you got a, a strategy, a plan to reopen your business through the, you know, with, with coronavirus? Is it on the website? Your competitors may be a step ahead and already have their plan up on the internet. So when people are comparing kind of competitors and if your website seems to be more up-to-date than the others, it's simple. They're going to go for the one that's more up to date, has the most up to date information. So it's just not about the te the, um, the technology because that's incredibly important, um, especially if you're on a WordPress website. But that, that is something that you know we, we will cover in, in another another time. Okay, uh, is the website about your target customer? I don't want to spend too much time on, on this slide because actually I could probably do a whole 20, 30 minute talk on just how important it is to be your customer, to how important your website should be for your target customer. But I'm going to share a very quick story, uh, one that um, improved conversions dr dramatically for a, a wallpaper company. A few years ago, um, working with a client pr uh, pre QBD, we had developed a, a, a website selling wallpaper and he, built a site himself but he hadn't actually made it about his customer he just had a you know fabulous wallpaper here prices and i said why don't you put a wallpaper calculator on there and guides on how you can help your customers find the right amount of wallpaper they need what materials do they need and make it all about them he did that and guess what his conversions went through the roof because people could go onto his website they could get all the information that they needed to to make that buying decision from the website. So what are the things that you can do that don't take very much time or, or very little cost to make it about your customer? They don't really want to know what your cat's name is called, but they, but they might do. But are there things that are in your product and services? It could be, um, you know, all of the things you need to ensure you bring with you when you go on holiday, you know, uh, you know that type of thing. Does it reflect your personality? Because your website, especially if you're in a small business, should reflect you and your personality. If you're a, a business that wears suits and you wear a tie and then you, your first word on your website says yo or yellow, that doesn't fit the personality of that brand. So try and find imagery and wording that fits your, your personality because it needs to be about your website. And is the website slow? And there are a couple of tools that you can use to, to ensure, to work out whether your website's fast or slow. But the tool that I like to use the most is, is, is yourself. So go on to your website and test it yourself. Do you think it's slow? Get your, get your, your phone out. Do you think it's slow? But there are tools you can use. And, and there's two tools that I particularly like. One of them is called uh, Google page speed insights and the other one is to think with Google test my site and both of them are very good they will rank your your um, your speed against other websites there's other other tools such as pingdom and um, and others so I done a so for transparency I did two um, the two tests so the QBD on a mobile is scoring below average at 14. But if you went on the QBD website, it opens very fast. So my point here is it's all relative. We need to use our, our, well, our brains and use our, our own intuition because a computer may think it's slow, but actually as a human, we can only process information so fast. But on a desktop, it's, above, it, it's average. Um, but actually, again, I've never been on the QBD website and said, oh, this is slow. This is only what the software is saying. So we have to use our common sense too. But if we compare this to the BBC, who are a big you know, household name, score of 12 and 51. 
But again, I'm sure none of you have been on the BBC website and gone, oh my God, that, this website's really, really slow. In fact, I think it's probably one of the quickest websites I've been on. It always has the access. So when you are testing for speed, the software can help, but also you've just got to how you experience it, especially if you've got an older customer because they're only process information so fast. I mean, teenagers, they they want things yesterday, but they're, they didn't go through the pains that we all went through with, with dial-up internet or with, you know, um, pre-fiber. So they never went through those struggles. I remember growing up in it, it taking, you know, 15 minutes of the football scores to come up on dial-up. You know, now I can get all the scores I want in the world for the last year and 15 minutes if I really want to. So, you know, speeds have moved on. So I've just gone through a few ways that you can test whether your website's fit for purpose just by yourself. But there are a few tools that can help speed up the process. And here are my two, my two favorite ones. And they're both free. First one is Nibbler uh, by a company called Skill Tide, And they have a paid pro version. And it does a really, you know, a quick audit. Uh, it scans five pages. And as you can see, we'll go into more detail on a screenshot in a second. But I did a, a scan yesterday, uh, four minutes past two. And it gave me a score of 8.7. Nibbler is a great tool. I refer to it as a box ticking exercise. It just goes, runs several tests and it just says whether you have it or not. And a score that's over kind of six or seven, in my opinion, is a great score. And I'll, and I'll go into the reasons why in a bit. And the second tool is another free one. Uh, it's a Chrome extension called Woo Rank. And it's a great tool, but it's very more aligned to SEO and digital marketing because Nibbler doesn't give you the detail on how to improve. It just tells you this is your score out of 10. Whereas Woo Rank tells you your score and then it gives you some really practical tips to, to improve that. Um, but it is very much kind of around about SEO. And we're going to do another one of those again because actually SEO is such a massive um you know well same with the internet there's so many kind of things to know about it so we're just trying to keep it nice and simple um and we'll just we'll focus on nibbler today and as i say it's a it scans five pages and it does these tests so it had these tests so from popularity right well, it scored us a zero on popularity but that's comparing that to the rest of the internet we have to remember that we're just a small business so I can't expect a popularity score of 10 because we are a small business. If I was the, the BBC or if I was uh, Amazon, I would expect a score at 10. So if you went to go and compare your, your business against a, a bigger organization, they will have a higher popularity score. So seeing a score of zero is it's where it should be. I think I would be slightly concerned if we had a higher score than zero, actually, because what are we, what, what are we kind of missing out on? The freshness, so this is, because it only scans five pages, This the freshness is something I wouldn't be too wet or too worried about. Freshness is how up to date the content is. So we may have, you may have done, when you go and, if you go and put an audit, you use this tool, you may have a low freshness score, but you may have updated pages that Nibbler hasn't scanned because it only scanned five pages. So we've got a freshness score. So not too interested with that one. Internal links is actually penalizing us on our, um, how big our links are. So we've got, um, within our structure of our site, we've got um, QBD1, QBD Pro. So it's a web design QBD Pro, web design QBD Lite. So it's penalizing us on that. But actually, from an SEO perspective, that is a good way of doing it because it kind of explains to the user through the link what they're going to expect. So I wouldn't be too too worried about it. It scored us 8.7 on Twitter. So for that score to be above nine, you need to have either tweeted 2,000 times or have 2,000 followers. Amount of content, that is, it's scanned the whole of those five pages and it's determined that we have a good amount of content. Um, it scans the images, so it's saying that all of our images, bar a few, are well optimized. We could do better in a few areas, but a score of 9.7 is a is a fantastic score. I think anything over a, a kind of a, an eight is a good score on Nibbler, really. 
mobile yes the website's mobile responsive server behavior we have a, a fast server so we so we, again it's all different software will give you different results it is different parameter parameters um analytics uh we we scored out of 10 because we've got google analytics installed on the website um if you haven't got it installed i would get it installed um we ran a webinar two weeks ago which was all about kind of i took you through google analytics and the basics of it the website has page titles it doesn't necessarily mean that these page titles are great but all as i say it's a box ticking exercise so all the pages of page titles they all have headings so they have the right headings h1s h2s which are really important it has good incoming links so the beauty of being a web design company is that we have several hundred websites linking back to qbd with website by qbd so that would always give us an elevated score there but i wouldn't necessarily expect many others to have that score out of 10 uh, but there are things we can do to elevate that score to help that, that work meta tags meta descriptions um, though they aren't an seo ranking factor um, they are very important to the user so it's tested printability so you could go and print the qbd website and it will print on an a4 piece of paper no problem because believe it or not people still print websites and it's it's important the url format yep we've got www.quickbydesign.co.uk it's important so that's tested because actually if you've got a, a website that's um xyz company dot uh, xyz web builder.com then that's really hard for your user to remember so it's important that that is your company name, .co.uk or .com or whatever. Um, domain age is another test on there, um, which is basically, I mean, our domain name is, is quite old. So it will scan, it's not given a score, but it's just given some information because it's not relevant. So this is a really good box ticking exercise for you to go and just find out whether your website is fit for purpose using a tool that's free uh, called, called Nibbler. There are other tools and we use um, a tool called SEMrush, um, which enables us to go a lot deeper. We can compare it to your competitors or we can find which are the most searched keywords. So we can start to think about SEO, etc. There are some other tools such as uh, Dib, which is a tool you can pay for, which, which is okay. But I, I think just to start out, I think Nibbler and, and WooRank are great tools just to get a, a really good indication whether your website's fit for purpose. And I've, so what we've covered so far, so we've given you kind of the tools to understand or the reminder that what the purpose of the website is and how you can go and audit your website. So these are tools that agencies that, um, and that, that myself and Rich and, and other people within the team actually go and use to audit customers websites when they say I'm looking to increase my my traffic or I want to get my SEO up we use these tools to understand whether their websites fit for purpose so you can go and do that and then hopefully I've given you some prompts and some ideas um, on how you can actually go in and improve some of these areas because actually Nibbler does give you a little bit of insight on how you can improve those scores but I would always encourage you to speak with uh, your web web company or have a conversation with with rich and i because we're always happy to to kind of kind of help 